Hello and welcome to this course on protocol buffers. This course is going to be a complete introduction to how protocol buffer works and I'm super excited that you're here today. So let's get started with the course introduction. So I want to tell you a story about the evolution of data and how proto bu protocol buffers came to be. So first we started with CSV or comma separated values. And so you have um, a header with rows and column names and then you have different columns row number one, row number two, row number three, and so on. And while this is okay, there's a few advantages. It's easy to parse, it's easy to read, it's easy to make sense of. Everyone knows that, everyone knows how to use Excel. But the disadvantages is that the data type of the elements have to be inferred, it's not a guarantee, and parsing becomes super tricky when the data contains comma. So overall, it's quite a shaky format. It works well for some things, but it's not great for data. Now we have relational databases, and they look like this in SQL, if you know SQL. And this looks like you create a table, and you say, all right, the first in this table is gonna be an integer for the column ID, and then it's gonna be a name, and it's gonna be a string. And that's pretty good. The advantage is that the data is fully typed, right? The data fits in the table, so like, like a CSV, you can really visualize it really well. But there's a few disadvantages. Number one is the data has to be flat, okay? It has to fit in the table. And number two is that the data is stored in the database and the data definition will be different for each database. So it's really, really tough to share the data across different programming languages or databases. Everything has to be customized. So while this is a really good idea to have um, fields that are typed, such as integers or varchar or whatever, this doesn't really work for the web. So next there is JSON. And JSON is really a, a revolution because it was able to be shared across the network. And this looks like this. JSON is really nice. You've probably seen this before and I hope you have. Uh, it's something really easy to share across the web and to make sense of when you look at it. Now we look at JSON formats. The advantage is that it can take any form such as it's an array, it's nested elements. It's widely accepted. Every single language can read JSON documents. It's very easy. And it's very easily shared over the network because it's text. But there's a few disadvantages. The number one thing is that there is no schema enforcing, okay? You can put anything anywhere in your JSON document and JSON will not complain. And finally, JSON objects overall can be pretty big in size, lots of bytes used because they repeat keys overall. So JSON is amazing, it's used by so many things and it solved a lot of problems, but there are still a few disadvantages, okay? Finally, no comments, metadata, documentation, anyways. Here comes protocol buffers. Protocol buffers look like this. We have a syntax line and a message and has a few fields, ID, first name, is validated, and you can read it right now. And it's super easy. The protocol buffers is defined by a dot proto text file, such as the one you see right here. And you can read it and understand it as a human. I haven't taught you anything about this file yet, but it kind of makes sense to you already. You kind of know what's happening. Now, the advantages of protocol buffers are huge, and here are a few. The data is fully typed, okay? Some things is integers, something is strings, and so on. The data will be compressed automatically, so there will be less CPU usage when you read it. The schema, defined using a proto file, is absolutely needed to generate code and read the data. The documentation can be embedded in the schema or in the proto file, so that means that you can literally document every single field and why they're here. The data can be read across any languages, would it be C Sharp, Java, Go, Python, JavaScript, etc., etc. The list is long. The schema can evolve over time. You can change your protocol buffer over time in a safe manner, and we'll see this all in this course. And overall, they made some comparisons with XML, and it's three to 10 times smaller, 20 to 100 faster than XML to parse and read data and so on. So overall, it's amazing. Finally, code is generated automatically for you which is quite nice. We'll see all of these things in the course. I'm just giving you a quick overview right now. There's a few disadvantages, obviously. Number one is that it only supports some language, maybe some other support languages may be lacking, but the main ones that everyone uses, it's fine. So Python, Go, Scala, Java, uh, JavaScript, and so on, they're all good. And finally, because protocol buffers, and we'll see in this course, is a serialized data format, you can't really open the data with a text editor just the way you would with JSON. So it's a little bit more difficult. But overall, Google, the, the company that created protocol buffers, uses it for 
all their internal applications. And overall, they have 48,000 protocol buffer message types in 12,000 protofiles. So just to let you know, it works. If it's working for Google, there's a great chance it'll be working for you. So I'm excited to have you in this class. We'll see how protocol buffer works. We'll see why it's so good. We'll learn how to write these protocol buffer files and code. So I'm excited to have you here. Hope you're excited too. And I will see you in the next lecture.